Здравствуйте, меня зовут Джордж Доу. Сегодня я вам расскажу историю, которая случилась со мной много лет назад. I call this story Two Minutes of Warning. I was about to enter graduate school at Villanova University, combining political science and computers, and I was living in the undergraduate dorm at the nearby St. Joseph's University because there was no room at our university for for graduate students. During the week, this was uh, about April, uh, it, was, it was finals week, and a lot of undergraduates to relieve pressure would let the uh, fire alarm go. And so we would hear the bells go for a few minutes, and then they would turn off. But this one time, it, it happened, it was a couple days after my birthday, and it was about 2 a.m. in the morning. And I heard this different bell sound, and it didn't stop. So I got up and went out to the hallway expecting to see undergraduate students running back and forth, but I didn't see anybody. I looked at, to the right and our apartment, my apartment was at the beginning of the third floor stairway, and I saw smoke coming up the stairwell. And I knew that was trouble. So I, I now believe that the alarm was real and knowing that smoke can ignite at any second I remember in my father's experiment that he did with our barbecue grill many years before, I realized I only had a few seconds to get out of the building before either the, call, the smoke would ignite or the fire would catch up with the smoke. Uh, either way, it was not good. I went back in, but I saw smoke coming out of the electrical outlets, so I went back out in the hallway, and for a moment I was thinking of running right down the third floor to the fire escape which I used every morning to get to the train uh, to get to my university. But I remember there were people up on the fourth floor, especially a, a single mom with two kids. She was a language teacher, and I just met her a few days before. So I ran upstairs and knocked on her door, but by, by the time I got to the top of the stairs, all the lights went out, and all I could see was a faint red exit sign uh, periodically at the top of the stairs and then going down the hall. So luckily, her apartment was the first apartment on the opposite, on the other side of the hall, but it was the first apartment on the fourth, fourth floor. So I knocked really hard and uh, told her to get out, and her name was Chris Ann, is Chris Ann. So I said, Chris Ann, get out. The apartment, the whole apartment building is on fire. This is not a joke. This is not a, uh, an alarm. Uh, it's real. So she opened the door, and, and uh, she had two kids who were kind of sleepily standing next to her. And I said, we've got to get out of here. We don't have any time. Uh, smoke's coming up, up the stairways, coming out the outlets, and this place could, could literally blow up at any moment from exploding smoke. So she and the two children, who were about two and four years old at the time, they went down the hallway, and I walked down the, down the hallway and knocked on uh, doors left and right, and some people were awake, and some, I, some doors were locked. So I knocked on, the, on every door going down on both sides, which is maybe 10 doors, 12 doors on each side. And uh, by the time I got down to the end of the corridor, and I'm doing this in the actual time that it took me to do it, um, it only took a couple minutes, maybe a minute or so, I looked back and down the hallway was all smoky, which meant not good news because, again, it could explode and have a exploding smoke uh, coming right at me. So I knocked on, I knocked on the last door, it was locked. Um, and I thought, good, they're, they're out. Unfortunately, that was the only fatality of the whole four-story uh, building, uh, four-story dorm building, and um, we found out later on he, uh, he was overcome by smoke. Mm -hmm. So I uh, didn't, didn't know that at the time, but uh, there was no choice and couldn't go back in for anybody, even if they did call for help. So I went down the stairwell. I was the last person. People ahead of me were walking slowly, and snow, smoke was coming up, it was being funneled up the fire escape because uh, hot air, hot smoke rises, so it was being sucked up the fire escape and it was choking everybody. Uh, we were all trying to not cough, especially me, because I was the last person. And uh, we were slowly going down and at the third floor the line stopped. And I didn't know why the line stopped, uh, why everybody was not continually going down. I found out later it was a very fat lady on the second floor who was who stopped and was coughing. So the fireman had to drag her out to keep the line going. 
but I didn't know that at the time, and it was not looking good for any of us. We were kind of worried that we wouldn't get out. Um, and then as we got to the second floor, somebody yelled up to us to bend down and get clear air, get better air near the, the closer to the stairs we got to. Because as I said before, smoke rises, and we weren't really thinking about physics at the time. But uh, had we known that, that hot air rises, one of us might have thought about going, leaning down and, and getting better air. So um, we all sort of bent down to get better air, cleaner air, less smoke. But we, there was still smoke everywhere, but it was less of it. So we finally got out of the first floor uh, fire escape, leading out to away from the building. And there was a fireman there to lead us out. And he asked if there was anybody else behind me, and I said no. So we walked around the building. They led us around the building to a place that was uh, another administration building. And uh, as we walked around the building, I could see the apartment that Chris Ann had just left a few moments, a few minutes before. And there were flames coming out of the windows, uh, huge, what we call tongues of flame coming out. And it was surreal to think that I was just there maybe two minutes before uh, knocking on her door to get her out. So um, had I knocked on her door and other people's door, who knows how many of the people in those 20 plus rooms might not have escaped. Uh, there weren't, there, people didn't come out of every room, but people came out of enough rooms to uh, uh, make me feel good that those people were safe. I'm sorry that I, that the last door that uh, I couldn't, I didn't know there was somebody in there, but it was really hard oak doors, so there's no way I could have gotten in anyway. So that's uh, that's the end of the story. But I learned something from myself. Um, I was uh, I worked as a lifeguard in pools in New Jersey Shore, um, and I had a, this is my first opportunity to really uh, act as a lifeguard to save people. And uh, I surprised myself that I didn't just run down the third floor corridor, which I thought for a second I would, but I took a calculated risk to go to the fourth floor and at least get one family that I knew was up there uh, out if they didn't hear the alarm, which I didn't hear until a few seconds before. So um, uh, it's said that there's a very small percentage of people who would take that risk, and um, I found myself as that percentage. I don't think I'd ever want to be a fireman, though, because I think I would take too many risks as a fireman, but at least in that one instance, I was able to help people uh, get out of that uh, burning building with a very minimum loss of life. Thank you.